Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys what's in my camera bag. I'm gonna show you guys everything that I use from camera to lenses, um, pretty much anything that I have in there. But for now, let's cue the intro. All right guys, so for starters, let's talk about the bag. So the bag that I'm currently using is this bag right here. This bag right here is made by Low Pro. It's the Flipside 300 AW2. I recently upgraded to this bag because the one that I had before, it was just too small. I was pretty much just cramping everything inside and like everything was just getting smushed together and I just didn't want my gear to like, you know, be in the in that situation anymore. So I decided to buy this one. I think I bought it for $120 if I'm not wrong. Um, because this bag is not the newest bag, but it gets the job done, which is why I got it. So one cool thing about this bag is that it's actually weather sealed. So right over here, you just pull this out. And you pretty much bring it over here and you cover it. What it looks like, not the best setup, but it'll get the job done. Now I'm put this back. All right, so um, that's that. And then it's cool because you have two things right here. So usually right here where you put your bottles, um, like a water bottle, I usually put this Joby Gorilla tripod here. Um, and I'll show you guys a picture of what it looks like when everything is inside. I simply just can't do that right now because I'm using some of the gear to shoot this video. But one cool thing I like about this bag is that um, on most traditional bags, like you can open, you can open and get to your gear from the from the front side. But when you have this bag right here, you have to come through the back side in order to get your gear, which is pretty cool because this way your gear is going to be protected and nobody can really like steal it or whatever unless they take it off your back. So yeah, this is pretty much what it looks like. I'm going to do a top down. Um, picture to show you guys kind of what it looks like um like i said it looks a little empty because i'm using most of the gear right now all right so first things first let's start with the lenses this right here is my g master 16 to 35 and um i actually got this gifted from my wife so shout out to her for getting me this um so yeah this is my 16 to 35 so whenever you guys see um for example like any type of videos that are shot outside and nine out of 10 times, it'll be shot on a 16 to 35. Um, so this is a really versatile lens. It's great because you know, you can uh, have it at 16 mil and then you can go all the way to 35 to have a little bit of compression. So it's a pretty good lens when it comes to that. Um, I love it. Obviously this is not a portrait lens. This is more like a landscape lens and show your surroundings to your viewers. So 16 to 35 G master, it's a must have. And for my second lens, well, this is technically my third lens if you think about it. Yeah, third lens, my 85 1.8. This lens right here is awesome for B-roll. It's awesome for portrait photography. Um, so if you're in, like, if you're a photographer, a portrait photographer, or you like shooting B-roll of tight with a tight focal length, you can't go wrong with the 85. The 85, I can honestly tell you, you can just put this lens on your body and. It'll just do the work for you. So if you're looking for a second to third lens, get the 85. All right guys, so this is technically the second lens that I bought because the very first lens that I bought was the, was the 18 to 135 that came with the kit lens with the 6400. Um, and then I got this bad boy right here, the 24 to 70 G Master F 2.8. Now this lens is heavy. That's pretty much the only drawback of that is that it's heavy compared to the 16 to 35. But let me tell you something. If you need a lens for every situation, it's very versatile and the only lens and you can only afford one lens, get the 24 to 70. You don't even have to get the F 2.8. You can honestly go by with the F4 um, with optical steady shot built in. The G Masters do not come with optical steady shot. So that's honestly something to keep in mind. But for me personally, I'm just that type of dude that like, I just want like the highest production possible. And for me, having an F4 lens was just not gonna cut it. So my first lens that I bought ever 
was this one 24 to 70 G Master f 2.8 all right, so those are my lenses. So now let's talk about camera bodies. So was, this wasn't really the first camera that I bought. Um, this, this is technically the second one. Like, believe it or not, as anybody that just starts in this industry, I went into Best Buy and I got a Nikon D3500. Like, it was so bad that it didn't even have like an input to put a microphone. And I didn't even know that I just went out and bought it But when I got my very first serious video camera, it was this guy right here the Sony a6400 with That back backflip screen now This was honestly like for a lot of the beginning of my videos This was the camera that I that I had which was like a huge step forward from a DSLR to my first mirrorless but it, this is an APS-C camera, um, so this is usually what I, if you guys seen my interview that I did, um, what YouTubers don't tell you, this was my B camera, the one that we're shooting on right now is my A camera. So this is a, like a great versatile um, camera, like if you're just starting, just get an APS-C camera, um, you're gonna, your pocket is gonna thank you. And I think I got this, yeah, and I got this with the kit lens with the 18 to, to 135, which was decent at the time, but like I said, I wanted to have the highest production quality, so I had to upgrade my lenses. So, Sony 6400, I think it retails, well, I got mine for 1200 bucks, but the body alone, I'm not a thousand percent sure what it goes for, but it should be like around like 700 around there so this is my secondary camera and now let's talk about my baby my first my a camera all right guys in this right here this is my main camera this camera right here now hear me out this camera like it's amazing for pictures and it's amazing for video which is why i got it this is the a7r3 um as you can see the little r right there stands for resolution now this camera right here it's a 43 megapixel camera um so it's gonna take really high resolution pictures so like for example comparing this 24 42 megapixel camera to a 24 when you're like pixel peeping and you zoom inside you'll be able to see a higher resolution and like your image is gonna be a lot sharper um, especially when you pair it with G master lenses. So this is my workhorse. Like whenever you see B roll, um, I want to say a good amount of my videos are was shot on this camera right here. Um, it was a great investment and honestly, I don't regret it one bit. If I can get another full frame camera, I would honestly say that I would probably get this only a seven S three. Now I'm still debating it because it is an expensive camera, but for as of right now, A7R3 is my daily workhorse. I've recommended this camera to a bunch of people that are into photography, photography and videography. You guys have seen the work that it puts out. Um, so it's great for pictures, it's great for video, and um, yeah, this is my baby. I love it so much. All right guys, so now we talked about lenses, we talked about camera bodies, so now let's talk about microphone. Because believe it or not, I've put a lot of money into microphones and until right now, I would say that I honestly found the best one. So for starters, I just did a video about this. This is the Rode NTG shotgun microphone, which it can also be used as a boom mic. That's pretty much how I have it right now. Um, and it's paired up with the Rode wireless go so it's a wireless transmitter one is connected to the camera and the other one is connected here which is great because we don't have cables everywhere but that's not the very first one that i bought the very first one that i bought which is the one that pretty much everybody starts with was the rode video micro so it was this little guy right here um and it comes with the cable if i'm not wrong yeah and it comes with the cable so this was the very first one that I bought and honestly speaking, it wasn't a bad investment. It actually got pretty decent audio for the price. I think this thing cost me like 60 or $50, but yet again, I bought it like a year or two ago and it came in with the dead cat. Um, so when you pair these together, 
you know this pretty much blocks the wind especially if you're shooting outside so it's very versatile um but yeah this was my very first one uh, microphone for road video micro for 50 to 60 dollars and then i bought a second microphone which is a sony microphone which was this guy right here the sony stereo microphone now i bought this one because I thought like, yo, this microphone is gonna make my audio go from here all the way to here. So it's this little guy right here. Um, and as you can see, it's a stereo microphone. So let's say you're having a conversation with one person, with one person over here and one person over here. You can literally split it and you will be able to have one conversation here and one conversation there. And it'll be a specific person, their own microphone which is pretty versatile. It even has the L and the R here. Now, one thing I like is that you don't have to specifically like plug this into your camera. So you pretty much put this onto the hot shoe of the camera. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but right there it has, um, it transfers the audio wirelessly. So you don't have to connect the cable to it, which is pretty cool because then you have a wireless setup. Um, and it's amazing, but I've had my run-ins into it. One thing that I hate is that, so there was this one time when I um, just put it on the hot shoe and I thought it was recording perfectly. And then when I took my SD card, plug it into my laptop, all I, all I was able to hear was this static sound. I was talking to it, but it just wasn't picking it up. So that's why I really haven't been using this microphone much ever since that happened. So, it's all right, but I do recommend just use it with the cable that way you don't have to second guess Is it recording my audio good? Is it is it just doing the static sound? You know that way once you get into post you edit it and everything is great You don't have to worry about this. So just use it with the cable It's kind of stupid because like I have literally bought it for that specific reason that I wouldn't have to worry about it But I mean, I mean you live and you learn right? All right, so this thing also comes with a dead cat, but now keep this in mind. For some strange reason, when you put on the dead cat on this, you have to increase your decibel levels on your camera like sky high because or else you won't be able to hear yourself. I've ran into that a couple times. It sucks. Um, so honestly, this microphone is all right, but honestly, you're honestly better off going with this it's only 50 to 60 bucks instead of this which is like a hundred dollars well at least when i bought it it was a hundred dollars i'm not exactly sure what the market value is right now all right and for the last microphone this was my third microphone like i said i'm using the wireless um go from that's plugged into the camera to this microphone right now and it was it came paired up with the lavalier mic so as you guys seen in a bunch of my videos i would just have it pretty much just like right here um which is great if like you're gonna be moving around a lot but obviously the the quality you're gonna get from this small microphone is nothing compared to this big ass microphone so um so yeah keep that in mind the bigger the microphone the supposedly the better quality it is but like i said i would rather use this than using this all right guys and then the next thing i have um is the aperture almx you guys have seen that I use this like pretty much everywhere I go and I use it for these sit downs as well. I mean, it's a pretty powerful light. Um, it's a 1800 milliamp hour um, battery. And I mean, you guys can see it's a, uh, it's pretty bright. Um, and this is not even the brightest it can go. This is pretty much the brightest it can go. Um, and it's cool because, um, you know, you can, it's versatile. You can take it anywhere you want. The only downfall that I really hate about this light is that the battery on this thing sucks, dude. Like you have to carry at least one portable charger. Don't expect to use this for more than maybe 45 minutes. Um, it honestly, for me, the battery sucks. If there's only one thing I could complain about is that the battery sucks on this. Um, but other than that, it's useful. All right, guys, so like I said, if you guys are going to use this light, make sure you guys have a portable charger with you or you guys have an extra one of these. Um, honestly, I haven't tried any other lights like these, um, but I just know the battery life on it. Uh, honestly, it's just horrible. Um, but I mean, it's a great investment if you want to start out with it, but you're definitely going to want to move along and get something a little bit better along the way. 
and that's pretty much all you get um, from the back side of this. I love it because it has a ton of dividers that you can pretty much customize to your liking. Um, so now let's jump into the front. Oh, also it has like a pocket right here for you to store like cables and stuff like that and like an extra SD card, which is pretty, honestly, like I said, this bag is great. It has awesome padding so you won't feel like the weight on your back. I also love the extra security that they put with this like a flip side one where you have to flip it over and get your gear. So now let's move to the front. And pretty much from the front, it's pretty simple. Like you just have this one zipper right over here. Um, and pretty much what I keep here are two bat one two batteries, one for the set A7R3 and the other one for the A6400. Um, and then I have my I have my Peter McKinnon variable ND two to five stop. This is the first edition. I just didn't feel like there was a big difference to jump onto the second edition. So I'm gonna just keep this one, you know, until it breaks, I guess. And let's see what else do I have here? A bunch of cables, mostly because of my microphones. Like, I think I have like three USB-A to USB-C cables from Rode. Um, and in this backpack specifically, I never carry my laptop with me or extra headphones simply because I know I'm going to be coming back where I have all that stuff. So there's no need for me to be carrying all that stuff, which is why I purchased this bag. I don't need a ginormous bag. I need the bag to get me from point A to point B with everything that I need. And yeah, honestly, other than that, that's pretty much it. This is, this is an amazing bag and um, it has these straps right here. When you put the tripod here, you can secure it to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. It has the weather seal um, and not for nothing, but I feel like the first bag that I bought was more like female-ish kind of looking. But this one, you could tell that if you, if you show up to your shoe with this bag, they're going to be like, all right, this guy's here to get the job done. Anyways. But yeah guys, that is pretty much everything that I have in my bag. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you guys have any more questions, please let me know in the comment section down below. Feel free to shoot me a DM on Instagram and uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We're gonna make awesome videos like this um, on a weekly basis. And we're gonna try to post more videos here more often during the week, maybe two videos a week. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you guys wanna see any specific videos, you know just let me know like you want to see b-roll behind the scenes or tutorials or anything just let me know so yeah make sure to like it make sure to like comment and subscribe and um yeah i guess i'll see you in the next one peace